Hey guys, this is Russ with RWG Research. I didn't post anything for a while here now. I've tried a couple of the, uh, new experiments. Um, I've got the EPG all hooked up. I did a lot of experiments. I ran hydrogen, oxygen mixture through it. Um, I ran uh, argon with uh, different various things. I uh, made a couple videos. I did not actually test or I should say I didn't actually record any video footage of me actually testing the EPG um, because I didn't really get very good results but I just think I need to look into a few things a little bit deeper I just want to post this video because I know you're probably wondering what happened where I am what's going on so I'm gonna give you a quick little run over of what I've been doing um, right now uh, the plasma donut thing I got some footage for you for that to show you uh, I'm recording this all on my phone and I don't have an editor for my phone and I gotta copy these videos off and I can't edit it with what I'm using so I gotta figure all that out unfortunately uh, but basically these are neon sign transformers that I have had for a long time and I finally decided I was gonna hook every one of these up there's eight of them there I was gonna hook those up in uh, series they're 5,000 volt a piece so that would give me 40,000 volts uh, the reason that the hydrogen donut didn't light up right is because the um, the distance between the, the electrodes are too far for the um, arc to pass through the um, hydrogen. That's what I'm finding out. So I thought 50 or, or 40,000 volts should do it. Uh, so I hooked them all up, got them on my bench, got them all set up. If I can edit these clips, I'll put it put it in there. It's pretty funny. Everything just arced against each other. There was actually arcs jumping back to my connectors. Uh, you can see how far, like, the these wires only stick out maybe five, six inches. There was actually arcs jumping off here all the way back to these, and these were in wire nuts. So I overloaded everything. It was actually really funny, and everything started, like, smoking. I will try to get those clips on there if I still have them. I don't even know if I deleted them. I was kind of mad because I wanted that to work, but it didn't. So I tried that with the donut, then I tried some other stuff, so I will post those videos. But right now I want to talk about this EPG. Quit wasting your time about other stuff, but <laughs> it was pretty funny. Basically, argon. Straight argon. See, before I had argon CO2 mix, that is not good. I need pure argon. So I was lucky enough to get this from my uncle. Um, basically, argon goes into this chamber with the spark gap in there right there if you can see it uh, high voltage to the capacitors to the back side of this here and uh, uh, yeah so basically I thought I could extract some electrons by wrapping wire around this and running it over here through this light bulb and to ground um, it seemed to it didn't light the light bulb up but if I put a meter across here I could get about 28 volts so I know there was electrons being extracted, I just don't think it was very much. I honestly, truly think that this actually needs to be a DC, a D, a DC voltage. And I'm working on that. Um, I got a donation today from Blaine, which I will show you on another day. I'm going to make another video for that, uh, which he gave me a bunch of really nice high voltage stuff. He's got more to send me that will help out a lot. Uh, okay, so I go through the chamber, uh, hopefully ionize some gases, mix in some electro or uh, some uh, magnetic particles. Go through this magnetic setup. These are three-quarter inch neodymium magnets, some big old things. Go through there, polarize this stuff, run into my system, run around the EPG here, and then out the other end. And then what I did just close this end off, close this end off, and I had hydrogen or I had the uh, argon mix in here uh, with how much pressure whatever I wanted I got it up to about 20 to 25 usually right now I got this little coil on here I did have my my big pulsing coil on here and I tried the rodent coil on there and uh, through my pulser and I had my laptop here and my signal generator and the pulsing thing I just I didn't I don't have it out here right now because uh, this is just an update for you but here's what I came up with I really didn't get the results I thought I was going to get. I mean, I, I literally got like nothing. Although on the signal generator, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, on the oscilloscope, uh, you could see every little five, uh, or you know, the five pulses. You could actually see a little bitty tiny voltage spike there. So it functions, it works. I just need to look into a few more things. So with y'all, with with your all, uh, 
Don't sound like too much southern. Not down that far. But with your help, I was able to purchase some copper, copper fittings, and everything I need to build a what looks like an original Stan Myers EPG system. So, set it up here for you. Uh, I gotta solder a few more, uh, two, two connections for the center. So, here it is. This is Stan Myers EPG replication right here. Um, this pipe comes right on off here. And uh, I'll be able to slide my coil pack on here, which I have to make. Um, progress just didn't go the way I liked it. So I decided to break down and buy the copper. I really have this feeling that there's something with this copper. So there's my centerpiece. This comes out. And, uh, yeah, that's the piece I don't have soldered on yet. And uh, I'm going to do a little pressure testing, make sure this is all good. This is the only piece I have left to solder. I ran out of solder. Um, solder joints look pretty good. They're not the best, but they are not that bad. Um, I actually, I, d I did not take, I have some pictures, but what I did is I took a board and I poked a hole right in the middle of it, like a big three-quarter inch piece of plywood. Poked a hole in it, put a piece of cardboard in there, measured out what I wanted to for my inside diameter. Poked a hole, stuck a marker in there, and I made a big compass out of a piece of cardboard, if you know what I mean. So you got a hole, a hole with a nail in that cardboard so it will not move. And then you can just rotate the cardboard and you can draw a circle. So that's what I did. Then I took nails, and I nailed about every inch and a half to two inches all the way around. Then I put one nail right here. And I got this bent around a, uh, actually around a water heater to get it to about the right size and get it nice and, and uh, round. And then I put it, I put it around those nails and it took three people. Uh, I was over at my father's house, took three people to get it nice and flat and hold it in place. And then what I did is took clamps and a piece of wood and I put a piece of wood on top here and the wood was on the bottom and I clamped it flat. So I clamped it in four spots. And then I went back and I just soldered it together. I really don't see that there's a problem with that. Um, uh, on some of the videos, it looks like it's insulated. But if you read the patents, it also says you could dunk the thing in water. So I think he coated everything. I don't think that each pipe was isolated. Um, but I could be wrong. Uh, so we'll find out. Um, got my caps here. Oh, sorry. Continuing on the nails. So I put all the nails in there. I got this soldered on here. I soldered... Got to use flux, and I soldered all the pipe together, a couple spots here, and then uh, I bent all the nails in and just popped it right on off. Uh, then I soldered this end on here, and this end was long. I had uh, this is a 20 foot stick of five, uh, let's see, three eighths uh, inside diameter. So a 20 piece, 20 foot piece. Uh, I had about uh, about maybe from here on back that's about how much I had left and I cut some short pieces for all the fittings here and then this piece and the the piece I have left is right here so that's all I got left out of a 20 foot piece so that's quite a bit of piping there um, you're probably looking at about uh, 18 17 foot maybe something like that so uh, that's what I did. I broke down and did that because I just have this weird feeling that there's something with this copper because every single uh, one of Stan's EPGs was copper. If it worked with plastic, well, why wouldn't you buy plastic? It's cheaper. Okay, so, and I also think there's a, there's a volume problem here. There's too much volume here. That's three eighths. Oh, I'm sorry, this is three quarter. Too much volume, I believe. So I got some, uh, a lot thinner stuff here. Okay. Um, basically, I honestly think there was ferrofluid fluid in here on Stan's EPGs. I just have this feeling that there was ferrofluid fluid in there. Um, because of some information I've seen and looked at, looked through, I just have this feeling. So I will be trying ferrofluid. fluid. I'll do all my gases first and try them out, but I will be trying ferrofluid, fluid and I do need... Um, a couple more donations for wire and ferrofluid. So if you either have ferrofluid or wire that you can send me, I'm thinking I'm going to use about a 21 or 22 gauge. I need to make sure the calculation is accurate, but I think that's it. 
I'm going to wrap this whole thing. I'm going to make this look identical to Stan's system and try it out. Because if it if you change the aspects of what it is, I'm using plastic. I've got wires different. I've got different coils. I don't have the right. I'm going to, I'm going to spec it out. And I already have uh, in my previous videos. I want to make this to the exact same. Because I want to make sure it works. Then we can modify it. Make it our own. Okay. Um... So that's what I have to tell you. I'm going to quit talking. It's 10 minutes now video. Uh, I will post some other videos for you that I have created. Some of them are kind of bloopers. They're pretty funny. Um, and they're kind of choppy and they're they're bad. And they're just, they're, they're silly videos. But uh, I'll post them. You guys enjoy them. Um, so I'm going to put that on here. I'm going to go find me up. Yeah, my video got cut. So it's kind of choppy. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and make me some plastic discs. Um exactly to what looked like what Stan was using I actually don't think I have any of those knobs I might be able to try to find some of those just to make it look the same but uh, uh, I really want to get this thing working I really feel that it does work and I still need your help so I appreciate anyone who has donated and uh, um, keep it coming it's pretty nice um, to be able to purchase things if you need them especially with what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to build and uh, unfortunately I just don't have any extra money um, so I really appreciate everyone's efforts in whatever you do, knowledge or or donations or parts, anything. Extremely helpful. I really want to say thank you. Um, yeah, so that's Russ, RWG Research. That's me. Uh, go check it out, rwgresearch.com. And also the forums are set up, and we are discussing this. You can see it's hot out here. Sweating. Uh, it's been a long day, lots going on. Uh... I'm going to let you go with that. I just want to give you a quick update and show you what I've been doing because I've been working my butt off for you. And uh, if you guys haven't seen the Smart Scarecrow, Smart Scarecrow show yesterday, he basically had an open forum so people could talk. And I missed it. I would have totally jumped on that. I did send him a, uh, a message on YouTube and hopefully maybe next week or the week after I'll be able to talk about this device on Smart Scarecrow show. Give it a Google. Smart Scarecrow show. Um, pretty cool stuff. He does some really, really neat stuff. And... Uh, Maybe I get on there and get people involved with this and uh, get people over the website and into the forums and uh, really get some feedback on this. So everybody that's been there already, it's been great. It's been uh, wonderful. Y'all have uh, really helped out. So I'm going to let you go with that. And this is what my workshop looked like. It's pretty, uh, pretty intense. There's a lot going on right now. And uh been working my butt off. Oh, man. I think my camera's sideways. That whole bit of that film is probably sideways like that. Deal with it. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Uh, peace.